What's up YouTube? All right. My goal today for this video is to one, tell you my ideas on choosing a kayak. Two, the things I've learned after buying kayaks. And three, what you can expect out of these things. So here we go. All right, it's Monday, Monday, and as you can see, the rain has kind of left. Nice clouds today, nice clouds. And but the wind is still windy, so it's still kind of rough out there. So what I figured is I would take like a few minutes. We're gonna talk about these kayaks right here. The Outback and the Quest, all right? So when you're looking to buy a kayak, what are, what are the things you wanna pick? Bella's helping me with this video right here. She's got input too, because she's watched this process for like the last few years. So in the comments below, I want everybody to comment on their philosophies on their kayaks, just so YouTube, that's what YouTube is, so we're all collective knowledge, so everybody can learn from everybody. <clears throat> so this right here is the Hobie Outback, right? This is where the decision you have to make, do you want to pedal or do you want to paddle? This kayak, it's a pedal kayak. Hold on. I gotta get the I gotta get the pedals. Alright, so you've got the pedals. And then you can also choose to paddle. Okay. Alright, so as you may know, you can tell that I have two kayaks. One to pedal, and I use this this outback here. And big water, the fast moving water, days when it's windy, uh, days when I don't want to have to paddle the entire time. And it's very nimble, super stable, but it doesn't cut through the water. It kind of pushes its way through the water. You'll hear like terms like hull slap, the hull's loud. It's because right here, when the water's coming by, it wants to slap the hull because it plows through the water plows through the water it doesn't like just cut through it like see the, the, see the front end on this quest the quest like just effortlessly slides through the water so when the, when you got that chop it just cuts it instead of plows think of the outback like a bulldozer okay you're pedaling and you're just pushing water out of the way there's nothing really elegant about the outback it just gets the job done super super nimble so I'm gonna move back here the Outback has a lot of storage space. You've got this entire tank well. If you need more space than that, you're taking too much stuff. You can put you know, a bait tank, you can put a big cooler, you can put a cooler and a bait tank, you can put a milk crate and a um, cooler or a milk crate and a small bait tank. All right. Now, a lot of people have asked me why I haven't got the new Outback. <laughs> For me, the fancy seat's not really that big of a deal. It's another thing to take care of, another thing to break, and I really not that un I'm not really that uncomfortable in this seat, anyways. I'll just put a piece of foam underneath me if I have to. Now, will the Outback hatch leak? Eventually, yes, because what happens is right here, the seal and the way this sits on top of the seal will uh, change over the course of owning the kayak. So when the water's hitting up over the top, it'll eventually seep in, but that's why you keep a sponge around. I just have a sponge right here, put it in here, soaks up the water, and I just get rid of it. It's hardly ever enough to have to do that. It's been sitting in the rain, so there's a little water in the bottle. I don't have any real gidgets and gasmos with the you know, with the ram gear, this was for my fish finder. As you can see, it's breaking and rusting. And partly because I didn't put the right stainless steel screws on there. But do I need the rocket tube? Uh, rod holders? No, because, because the rods fit in there fine. I haven't had any problems with them flying out of the rod holders. Except for in this one, I lost the, lost the rod in that one. Partly my own fault. Okay, so... Pedaling is way easier. You can Facebook and pedal. 
you can text and pedal you can eat and pedal so that's one good thing about having the outback it's a bigger frame so you can hook more stuff on there you can take more gear but i've become a minimalist if it doesn't fit you know somewhere around the bottom of my crate and in my life vest it's not going i also got the sailing rudder right here sailing rudder is clutch i totally get one and also make sure you get the um, turbo fins for your your outback all right let's move here to the quest okay i want to give you the the ins and outs of both of you all right all right one thing i like about the quest and you'll find these this in like the ocean kayak prowler 13s another good yak you'll see in the the trident series the the reason why these are cool kayaks they're almost like a surfboard as far as getting it from the car to the beach it's lighter it's not as bulky it's sleek stable enough to fight big fish and it cuts through the water really well and this kayak is way faster than that kayak now when we say fast what does fast mean okay fast means effortlessly I can paddle this one at a, at a good tempo is faster faster than this one pedaling at a good tempo all right now that being said um, when you're paddling you want some effortless paddle because you're gonna be paddling all day you don't want a tugboat that is like shoving water all over the place while you're out there fighting a 15 mile an hour wind a cross chop and trying to go in and out of the break that'll wear you out so you need to ask yourself how good a shape are you in and are you won't want to do that is this an exercise thing or is this a recreational thing if it's a recreational thing this is your kayak if it's not a recreational thing it's, if it's a recreational thing that you want to occasionally go out and get some exercise like a paddle board this is more of your kayak like my buddy jimmy has this ocean kayak prowler 13. he loves it you know why because he can put it on top of his car he's got a, a little like honda he can put it on the car top it's not heavy he can lift it by itself and he is down the beach and waiting on me while I'm huffing and puffing pulling this thing okay so um, you know he's made peace with paddling that's his thing keeps him in shape keeps him looking good and he's cool with that so this kayak is like I think it's like 50 or 60 pounds it's this is an older quest so it doesn't have all the gadgets and gasmos it you know has plenty of rec leg room the hull and here or the this deal is uh you know pretty waterproof the elastic on this one's going going south so it needs to be replaced soon but the newer ones you know these things are seal up pretty good the prowler seal up pretty good and we've caught some big fish in these things jimmy's caught some big fish and it, it all boils down to do you want something light quick nimble that you can take a lot of places on a car top you might not have a big place to store it or if you're night fishing in shark infested waters and you're going to be wrestling a tarpon or a bull shark this is where you need to be it all depends on what you're going to do if i'm around the bridge and i know there's a current and there's you know might be some side shot with some boats and i need speed and maneuverability this one paddling i really don't care how great of a paddler you are nimbleness being able to turn in a circle real fast being able to chase a fast king mackerel while you're trying to stab him for somebody else hard to do in a paddle yak this one i can turn like in a circle almost i can pa power out of the way real fast i can keep my line from getting in my rudder because i'm spinning fast so um this, that, those are the things you need to think of before you buy. I did another video on watch it. You know, I think it's called like watch this before you buy a kayak. These are just my thoughts. 2010 year group Outbacks to 2014 solid boats. Uh, if things break, you can um, get them fixed pretty fast. Like I've broke some stuff on this. Like I've broke this pulley, five bucks to be fixed. I've broke two rudder pins, five bucks. Um, they, they, they go back together real easy. You can watch a video, super simple to fix. So you gotta think about these things before you buy your kayak. If you're overthinking it like I did and you watch every video for like six months before you buy the kayak, go to one of these, these 
kayak stores and say, hey, I want to try out a kayak. And, you know, it's probably no big deal. They got demo days and narrow your search down to like three or four yak. A lot of people always ask me, you know, have you seen this kayak? Have you tried that kayak? I guess, you know, a lot of people want to try out new things, but there's a handful of, of boats in, in the kayak fishing category that are tried and tested and people stick with them. And it's for a reason because they're solid boats. Okay, so the Hobies, solid boats. Yeah, you're gonna pay for them. No, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I'm just trying to help people who are watching this because I really struggled with what I was gonna buy. So I'm helping, okay? So the Hobies, the ocean kayaks, the, uh, the wilderness and the natives, and those are solid boats. And that they'll hold their value for resale if you ever wanna resell them, you're gonna get your money back. But you know, a lot of these other companies, you know, I'm a little shaky on them. But uh, that's just me and just my thoughts. You are gonna break stuff, so I suggest if you're new, get a used kayak. If you want a new one, um, don't get mad when you get oyster rash all over the side of it. Don't get mad when you break rudder pins or you slam it upside down. You know, that's part of the sport. Just have fun. Pick something you're gonna have fun. And if it's from Craigslist, you're gonna probably have more fun with it. This one I got for like 375 bucks with a cart and the whole nine yards and a paddle and I was rocking and rolling and this kayak will do just about anything. Yeah, if you go from fishing in this one to fishing in this one, you're gonna feel rickety. It's gonna like make you feel uncomfortable until you get used to the platform. Like I said, it's like a surfboard compared to this. But um, this thing's fast. It cuts the water gr great. You know, if I was doing offshore, I'd want longer legs like 14 to 16, but 13 is that transition point. These, It'll take on just about anything you throw at it. I've been three to five. I've been moderate chop in the bay, fishing the bridge at night with bull reds and no problems. Um, I've, I've never flipped this on my own accord fighting a fish and I fought tarpon and bull sharks. Um, you, you will flip it come through the break if you don't know what you're doing every once in a while. I've had it loaded down two or three huge king mackerels coming through the break, no problem. Um, but it's all time on the water and feeling comfortable. I, I hope this stuff makes sense. I kind of ran it for a while, but you know, if you're looking, it's like stocks, pick the best ones in the market and wait for a deal on one and you will, um, enjoy it a lot better because there's been a lot more time put into these thick holes, thick holes, and you know, it, they're going to last a lot longer. You know, it's just it's how the game works. So I hope all this stuff makes sense. Comment below if you got any questions or I'm sure some of the awesome subscribers in, on this channel will help you out if you still got questions. Please like and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and on Yak Motley and on uh, Instagram at Yak Motley. And I got Snapchat and all that. It'll be in the comments below. And I'll see you guys later. I hope this helps. Later. Bye.